call uh, Tracy Martin. Oh, very much. Um, just to take a second short call, just to, just to clear up a few things, particularly um, with regard to Mrs. Nash, Mr. Nash's contribution, because uh, I think it was valuable, because I think many people might assume that that is uh, where this bill is going. And I, I want to put it into the first person. I wanted to put it into a real life situation, and why New Zealand First will continue to um, support this bill. Um, and Mr. Nash has uh, pointed out there is concerns around the sub subjectiveness of um, the application of this law. And I think that's why, and I think Mr Nash and, and his colleagues should be able to rest assured with regard to the approved agency, that that is one of the reasons why the approved agency is there. But I want to point out, sir, let's take for example, recently there was a Sikh student on a bus who had a photograph taken of him, which was then photo uh, posted up on Facebook. And um, suggestions were made by the person who posted it up, not suggestions, but he, it was said that he was a sex offender. Um, and that was what was posted up with his photograph. This person did not know this student in any way, shape or form. Um, and the next thing that happened was people started to post comments and actually some of those comments were threats against this young man. This young man went to the police and asked for them to do something about these digital threats that were being posted to him. First of all, the digital defamation that was taking place and secondly, the digital threats. Under the current law, um, one could use the Harassment Act, and he certainly was being harassed. The problem was that the ha Harassment Act assumes right now that there is a relationship between the person being harassed and the person doing the harassing. So, unfortunately, that doesn't fit the Harassment Act right now. The second thing is there's the misuse of a phone device, which is section 112 of the Telecommunications Act. Um, so, he could have taken a case against that poster, but again, the poster could have said that um, it was a genuine mistake and it comes down to a nuisance. And it not, it, just because the photo was taken on a phone doesn't mean it was therefore posted. It was posted by a phone onto a computer and then everything else was done on a computer. So that didn't fit the thing. He was threatened with grievous bodily harm by other people that posted on there. And that certainly fits the crime under the Crimes Act section 306. However, Existing law, again, suggests that there has to be a relationship between the person who is threatening and the person who is being threatened. So that doesn't work. The Crimes Act, Section 306, doesn't work. So in other words, apart from the police, a police officer going onto Facebook and private messaging that person, the person in the first instance and saying, excuse us, but this person has come to see us and says that this is a lie, could you please take it down? There was nothing in existing law that could allow that student to seek some sort of recourse. That's exactly what the point of this bill is. So under this bill and under these sections, this student could have gone to the approved agency straight away. The moment he knew that that post was up there, he could have gone to the approved agency. Um, and the harmful digital communications bill would have come into play. So the original post that accused him of being a sex offender definitely fits the civil test under the HDC under this bill. It breaches the sixth communications, the sixth communications principle, a digital communication shall not make a false accusation. Um, it's, it's a, it is serious. There's a test in section 11 that it says it has to be serious, repeated or threatened. And it's harmful. The breach has caused and is likely to cause harm of the individual. The step two of the um, approved agency, so once they've met all that criteria, they make that assessment, they've met that criteria, they go to the person who actually posted the, um, the threats, goes to the person who posted the original um, posting up on Facebook and can actually then take a case against all those that then threatened him and they can ask them to remove it. They can go to the host, so they can go to Facebook themselves and under this, um, under this legislation ask them to remove it. At the end of the day, if nobody takes it down, they can then take a case to the courts and they can say this is actually under the harmful digital communications bill, this is a threat to this person, there's no relationship between this person and the people threatening him, however it truly is a threat and this person, has, their safety is at risk. That's the purpose of the bill. The purpose of the bill is there is a hole in our law because of new technology. And we shared these concerns to start with. But New Zealand First has had conversation to clarify that there is no other method currently for the Sikh student that was abused and threatened over Facebook to seek any sort of remedy from their state. So we continue to support a remedy for these students. Kia ora.
I call uh, Chris 